the town in the special education grant at the school. There were no findings with respect to that grant. Um, we also have to submit to the state auditor a uh, procedural checklist which covers the town's audit. There were no, uh, nothing to report in that um, report as well. Um, and we also were required to submit to the main uh, Department of Education a reconciliation of your financial information and whether or not you complied with the Maine School Finance Act. And you know, there's no, no issues of non-compliance with, with respect to the school department and compliance with the Maine School Finance Act. So those are all, everything's really all, I would say, standard uh, reports with really nothing to, to, um, uh, to, to make mention of. Um, so first, we'll, we'll get right into our management letter to the town. Um, I believe you may have a copy of that in front of you. Um, First, I want to make sure everybody understands when we issue a management letter that there are three different levels of severity to consider. Um, the, the highest level or the most serious condition would be considered a material weakness. Uh, the next highest level is slightly below that, a significant deficiency. And then the lowest level would be um, referred to as a controlled deficiency or a lot of times we would call it a best practice recommendation. And so we have to evaluate the, the uh, the items that we find and, and make judgment as to the level of severity. So um, as far as the town is concerned, we did have one best practice recommendation. And um, if you have the comment in front of you, it's, it's, it's titled Consider Updating Policy and Procedure Documents. So I think when we were, when we were doing the audit, we looked at um, some of the policies that are um, out there for the town, uh, the, the investment policy, the administrative code, and the purchasing policy, and felt that they were a little dated. Maybe um, it's time for a review of these policies. Uh, management has responded to our management letter comment, and they've, they've issued a response to the um, to our to our comment. They've accepted our comment, and um, you know are working on updating the policy. So um, don't really see any issues there. I don't know if anybody would like to ask questions or a further comment on on that no I we're certainly prepared to do that I think we'll be coordinating with our council committees uh, to the extent that it's appropriate whether it's finance or ordinance to work through that I don't see any issue with uh, being able to look at those and maybe do a total rewrite as needed um, certainly in time for next audit. And, and the finance committee is working on the investment policy as part of a combined consolidated debt management capital and I think investment is in there overall fiscal policy fiscal policy. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes yep when you say they were a little outdated uh, were there particular aspects of them that it, just, were just purely that um, they hadn't been updated in a while not that they were um, that there was any particular deficiency in them it was just that they had had not been revised in quite some time okay so that to the extent that a review of them concludes that they are appropriate as presently written then that would be an appropriate action to take. Certainly, yes. Thank you. Oh, so my question was just along the lines of, uh, uh, did you have specific recommendations, but I think they were addressed by Bill, so thank you. Um, so I think we'll, before we go into the financial statements, we'll go into the, the management letter comments we had for the school department. Again, also two best, pra best practices recommendations for the school department, and actually that should say, Three. There's actually three items in our letter. I missed one when I put the slide together. Um, uh, but the first comment is um, regarding the, the, the school department has a new point of sale system, and um, you know there 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 weren't procedures to reconcile the totals from the monthly point of sale system to the general ledger, and so we're recommending that there's a, a procedure be put in place to to do that on a on a monthly basis. Um, and, and, and with each of these comments as well, too, um, the school department has responded to these comments. I think next year we'll we want to make sure we'll get them in the same letter. We'll make sure we do that, but there has been a, a separate uh, response that um, the, sc the uh, school management has put together. Um, the, the second comment is regarding school nutrition reporting. There's a, a report that's submitted to the state that reports the activity of the um, of the school lunch program on a on a monthly basis um you know there weren't any there, were, there weren't significant um discrepancies here that was just a, a, a transposition of the number of bill counts for one particular month that we tested um but i think it was evident when we looked when we inquired further that there's not a secondary review process and so we're recommending that there's a secondary review process with respect to that to um uh, to, to identify any potential errors in the reporting and the last comment um it's kind of a re repeat comment from the prior year where uh, there's an internal policy that um, cash collected at the school 
nutrition program is counted under dual control. And so while we did notice that there were two signatures on each deposit, we, we found out that that was <coughs> done simultaneously. And it's important to have that done simultaneously as kind of an independent check on each individual who's responsible for counting the cash. So, um, so we're looking to see that that gets um, tightened up as well. And, and again, I th each, each one of these has been responded to, and I think there has been some action taken already, and, and these are things that we'll look at next year, as well as the town's comment to, to see how they're, if they've been implemented or if, if there needs further correction. So I don't know if Kate would like to comment on any of that at this point, or? Um, Christian, I did give the written responses, you know, as I showed you um, to our school board members in response to the letter. I don't know that the town council actually gets copies of the school letter, but I can certainly share that with, with you folks as well. Um, I mean, the, the short version of the story was that it was the first year with that new software last year, and I actually, I want to thank Chad for plowing through endless reports with me during field work to figure out what was the best way to actually be able to tie these things out and, and uh, make sense of them a little more carefully. Um, as far as the, the double cash count, that was kind of interesting because it was uh, a kind of like a game of telephone. I said, you will do this. And they said, of course we will do that. And they heard something different from what we, what I was saying. Uh, so they've cleared that up. They've actually changed their schedule around so that they can count the cash at a different time of the day when there's always two staff members available. And we actually put that into, the pl into place while the field work was going on because we were having these conversations back and forth with school lunch folks um, about what was actually going on. So as Christian said, we've been able to sort of move forward with these things already. Okay, um, I'll move on to the town financial statements. Um, so really, the slide is really just um, kind of for your reference, I guess, for your future reference, just to have an understanding of what's in here. There certainly is a lot of information in the financial statements, and, and there's not enough time to go over, um, not enough time to go over all, all of it. Um, but so within the financial statements, uh, there's there's a lot of um, useful information. There's a lot of detail. Uh, and so this is the 12th year that the town has participated in the uh, CAFR program. So that's a certificate of achievement in financial reporting for which uh, the town, town receives that by producing a, a very detailed financial report with, with just a tremendous amount of schedules and graphs and charts so that there, there's a lot of information available here to anybody who's interested. Um, so as part of that program here, the required elements of it include the transmittal letter, which is pages 1 through 12. If you were to read that, that would give you an overview of the history of the town and the town demographics. It's a lot less financially oriented and just more factual. Um, now, our auditor's report, that's on pages 19 and 21. That's important, as I mentioned before, to understand that we did express a, an unmodified opinion on the town. Um, there's also what's called the management's discussion and analysis, and this is really a narrative by management that will give you um, a good summary of the year and how the year compared to the prior year. There's lots of charts um, in this section as well, which, which helps with the, with the understanding of the, the information. Um, so also it's important to understand that in a, in a governmental financial statement, uh, the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, um, they're, they're the ones that um, prescribe the pronouncements that we have to follow. Um, they've, they've decided that for to have a useful financial statement that there needs to be three separate sets of books, three separate sets of accounting. So within the financial statements, there are um, what's called the government-wide financial statements. Those are on pages 41 and 42, and so those are on a full accrual basis. So that's supposed to mirror similar to what a business would look like. So it captures all of your um, fixed assets. It captures all of your long-term debt and liabilities, whereas your fund financial statements are going to really more closely mirror what you do internally. And so that's on two other pages, 43 and 44, and that's considered the modified accrual basis of accounting. And then it's, there's just some slight modifications to your budgetary basis. So there's a page in here on your budgetary basis, and so that's definitely how you account for your internal record. So, um, you know, I, I thought the idea was supposed to simplify financial statements, but they, they certainly <laughs> haven't done that. So. Um, also within the financial statements, we have, uh, you know, there's fiduciary funds, so there's money that both the town and the school are responsible for. Um, 
uh, you know, for other parties. So there's student activity funds are considered a fiduciary fund. There's uh, various trusts that the town is responsible for as well. Uh, that's all included in here. And then, of course, there's, you know, many, many pages of footnotes and supporting schedules that support all this information in here. So, um, you know, we can certainly go into any of it in, in detail if, if, if you would like. Um, but I'm, I'm really here just to hopefully give you the highlights and we'll, we'll go into some of the pages. And, um, and, and also, I just wanted to to clarify that even though it says town, it's it, it's incorporate of all school and town. It's both true. in this one. The one that the school get is just school. So. Correct. Yes. Thank you. Um, so I always like to make sure that people understand what's new or different. And so there is one um, additional disclosure this year, and that's on page seventy-seven. If you're if you're following along. And so the GASB decided that it was um, important to the readers to have a better understanding of tax abatements and the nature of tax abatements. So this disclosure is changed from what was there in the past. And, and basically what this tells us is what's the difference between, uh, um, you know, a tax abatement is considered basically a, um, you know, where, where the taxpayer receives a benefit or a reduction in their taxes for doing a development here. Um, compared to, I think, a tax increment financing agreement may not be the same in that um, that money could, in some cases, be retained by the town for a specific purpose, and that's set aside. So in this disclosure here, we're disclosing that um, for June 30, 2017, there was about $732,000. That would be considered tax abatements, and we have to disclose the most significant tax abatements. So the Gateway Shops receives about $561,000 a year in a tax, um, tax refund, basically. And then the Enterprise Business Park receives another $106,000. So there's other smaller abatements that we don't disclose separately. And then the Highest Parkway District, the, the tax that, that is captured there is set aside for town purposes. So that's technically not an abatement because we are still retaining that money. Um, and so that's, that's, that's what's new. Um, and the abatement, nationally they call it an abatement, but what we call it a credit enhancement agreement. So it's, it's not a, you know, physical, oh, we're paying a person back because for whatever reason it's a it's a credit enhancement that the council authorizes um, so next year we will have some additional information as well to report on uh, GASB 75 requires full accrual of your other post employment's benefit liability so right now that is there is a number captured in the financial statements for that um, I think it's about 1.9 million next year the full amount of the liability will come on the books it's about 2.9 million um, and again, this is, it's, you know, doesn't really affect your budget statement, but it does affect the full accrual model. So that's um, something that we'll need to report on, and there'll be another three or four pages of worth of footnotes regarding that next year. Quick, quick, quick question. Quick question. So this is a new, we have to book this, this liability of a million dollars, is what you're saying, right? I, I, are other towns starting to think about funding that liability in some manner? Um, in New Hampshire, yes. Um, the liabilities there in New Hampshire are significantly, are, are vastly more significant than in Maine, I would say. Um, I don't know of any Maine towns that have separately funded it, but you can um, set up what they call an, call an OPEB trust to, to help fund, fund that cost. What is your recommendation? Um, um, I, I guess I don't have one. Um, <laughs> to you. So that's a green light to you. <laughs> um, no, but, but, it's a, but it's, a, it's an unfunded liability that's going to go on the books. Correct. Correct. And it's only on the government-wide statements. It doesn't affect the budgetary statements in the same manner. Right. But, it, but as you look down the road, there's, going to, there's more of these that are going to post-retirement benefits and a bunch of other things that we've talked about. What do we do about mindful planning about when that liability comes due? Right. Yeah. Um, all right. So getting into some of the details of the financial statements and some of the numbers. I think I'd first go to page 43 with respect to this chart. Um, so this is just showing you what the, the total general fund fund balance is for the past three years. And this is the town. So this does also include the school. Um, so you can see uh, that the fund balance has increased over the past three years from almost 12 million two years ago to about 14 million 
for each of the last two years. So you can see that the first column, general fund down towards the bottom, total fund balances, 14,284,788. Um, and so that you can see there's lots of different components here. And so the next thing on the slide that I'm going to show you is, okay, well, what portion of the fund balance is considered unassigned? And so you have, um, you have a policy where you want to maintain an, a minimum unassigned fund balance of 8.33% of your annual budget. And I believe, um, based on this chart, you're rated at about 8.88% or so. So you're above the minimum fund balance requirement. So you can see that number on statement three towards the bottom. It's about $6,893,000. $6, um, and you can see right above that, you can see the schools, uh, part of the school's fund balance at $2.1 million. Um, and then there's another little piece of the school above that for 241000 And so we've um, done some comparisons here to some other communities. Um, I, I can definitely say it's, it's kind of a wide range. Um, you know, Falmouth is at 25%. Cape Elizabeth's at a little more than 10%. South Portland's at about 16%. Um, and they all have variations in their policies. Um, some are, some policies are at 8%, some are at 10 or 15%, and they're kind of, um, kind of all over the place. So I think a rule of thumb is generally at least one month is, is considered to be good. Um, a lot, you know, a lot of other towns seem to be more in the 12 to 15% range, I think. I don't know if anybody has any thoughts or questions on that. Christian, in your experience, is Falmouth an outlier? Um, I would say, I mean, I think, I think South Portland was up in that range a few years ago, but they've come down. So yeah, I mean, I, um, I think most of the ones that I can think of that we're working with now are probably more closer to say 12, 12% 12 or 15, I think. Thank you. Um, so, you know, you're, you're in good financial shape, you're within your policy. So that's definitely important to understand that. Um, so this would be a good point to go over to the budget actual, which is on page 46. And um, this gives you a summary. <coughs> result of the town's budget actual for the year and so in this you can see that in total revenues were um, more than budget by six hundred and sixty nine thousand eight hundred sixteen dollars expenditures were less than budget by one million five hundred sixty one thousand nine eighty one um, and uh, I, I guess the other thing I'd point out here too if you look down three lines down under other financing sources uses you had planned to spend, it's called utilization of surplus, you'd planned to spend $1,588,314 from fund balance um, for the year, but the actual results for the year were you had an increase in fund balance of 109811 So you planned to use fund balance, but the results were favorable compared to that, and as a result, your fund balance really didn't change. If everything had gone according to plan, your total fund balance would have decreased by about a million and a half, a million six. So that's definitely a, uh, a favorable result for the year in terms of where you came out. We did institute a curtailment order in kind of the third and fourth quarters of that of this fiscal year, and I, I certainly believe that um, that action had something to do with us coming in under budget from the expense side. Um, you know, and you can also see you know some of the key key categories. I mean, tax revenue was three hundred ninety-two thousand dollars favorable compared to budget. Um, on the expenditure side, education was $853,000 favorable to budget, as well as um, a lot of the other categories as well, where they, they, the results were favorable to budget um, for the other, most of the town um, departments as well. The majority of that tax revenue um, is excise tax that uh, exceeded our budget expectations. That continues to perform and outperform year over year. This next slide just shows a little more detail of some other revenue sources. So there you can see uh, the green is the excise taxes. So you can see that's almost $6 million now. Um, you can see the state education subsidy. That's a steady decline. Um, I think that's no surprise to anyone. I, I went back to 2009. In 2009, the state, um, the state education subsidy was $7 million. And now it's a little over three. So that's a pretty significant decrease. Um, other categories, I've got state revenue sharing in there. That's been pretty consistent over the last three years at about a million. Uh, I've also got some expenditure trends here. So you can see here, education is the largest um, department of the town. Um, now, it's, slide's a little misleading in that in 2016 looks like it's um, 
you know, significantly less than 17 and more comparable to 15. But if you remember in 16, there was about $2 million of debt service that was paid directly from the Wentworth Fund out of capital projects. And so really, if you were to compare apples to apples, I would say, you know, based on how, based on how the budget was laid out, it, you know, the total expenditures for education were probably around 43 million out of the general fund last year, if you were to bring in that $2 million. This year it was done, you'll see it was done just a little differently where that the debt was paid out of the general fund the school department and the money was transferred from Wentworth to cover it. So, I mean, you really get to the same place in the end, so. Um, but that's, that's the, the reason for the, um, why you see, why it looks like a big bump from 16 to 17. So other categories, uh, other major categories for the town, public safety, steady increase to about $10 million, a little more than $10 million now. Public works has been pretty steady at $6 million. Debt service is pretty steady at about $6 million. And now that debt service is just the town's debt service. It does not include the schools because the school's debt service is included within the school number. So that's really um, a separate number. Just if I could, one of our strategies historically has been to keep that debt service number, including school, uh, as constant as possible, uh, that has that can have the effect of, of really changing your operation operating expenses if that debt service number changes wildly year over year. So we're really trying to be attentive to that number and keep that as constant as possible because that really can add some fluctuation to the tax rate um, year to year. Um, I think we're going to go into the school reports unless there's any other questions here. I, I was going to make mention of. Um, of uh, the liability that was recorded for the uh, taxpayer abatement, that that's, sure, that's, that's in here as well. I know Councilor Hayes had uh, raised some questions uh, around that. Um, well, just one thing, just to understand, within within the town's financial statements, we there was um, there was an accrual made for the payment that was made to the taxpayers um, as a result of the the, um, the tax abatement appeal program. And so on page 64, there's a footnote that talks about um, that litigation and the amount that was uh, the town was required to pay in October, that's been reflected in the financial statements that you're looking at because we knew that, that at that time we knew that amount was ter determinable and it did apply to prior years, so that was reported. <coughs> yeah, the, the issue really gave, from an audit perspective, gave rise uh, from the fact that the Board of Assessment Review made their final decision in May and actual payment didn't occur until the following uh, October. So they made a, an adjustment to report it back in the proper fiscal year. But, but I guess my second part of that question, they've made a, another judgment where there's more liability that you highlight as we think about next year's budget and financial statements. Would you recommend that we put <coughs> some money in the budget to, to account for that additional potential known liability? Um, well, I mean, if, if it's... I guess it depends on if it's reasonably certain that it's going to be paid. So we didn't have that additional amount accrued because I think there's still some more hearings and appeals to, to be to be had. But I mean, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to set aside funds in, in the event of. But and that's something we would look at to have recorded if um, if it does come out unfavorable. So that we so would look say, at. So that it, what was that last part of your sentence? Well, if 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 the 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 result of that appeal, if the judgment is against the town, then I think we would look to have that. That would likely. Would very likely apply to the June 30, 2018 year because it, um, because of uh, you know if, if it's determined in May, um, okay. so it, you know it would be it would impact last. And, and to the point, to the extent that we do not budget specifically and separately for that to fund that liability in the operating budget, uh, from a practical matter, we would use overlay first, exhaust that. We would have to go beyond that, I, and then we would look to fund balance to fund the the, the remainder of the liability. So there are means to meet that obligation other than budgeting those monies. But that's a discussion point we can certainly have. Right. I, I'm only asking because if, if, that's, if that's the need, then I think trying to be sensitive to our fund balance that we talked about and our guidelines of what we want to have, that may mean we need to do something in the next budget cycle. Understood. All right. If there's no further questions on the town, we'll go into the school department reports. A couple more of these, if anybody's short one. <coughs> I might suggest, in the interest of time, you keep keep moving. Okay, we'll catch sure. up. 
Sure. Um, so the school department reports, um, there's a lot less volume to them, a lot less volume to them. Uh, we've also issued an unmodified opinion on the school department. Um, the report's a little different in that this is a departmental financial statement rather than a full-blown GASB financial statement. Um, and that's primarily because of, you know, the, the, the school department as a department of the town and technically the assets and the debt is in the town's name, not in the school's name. So uh, from, from an accounting standpoint, it just it makes the financial statements a lot easier to understand, I think. I, I guess I, that's how I characterize it. Um, but if we're going to go into the financial statements here, um, I, first I would go to the budget actual, which is on page five. And so similar to how we went over with the, uh, the town as a whole, this is the school department's budget actual results. So for the year, you can see that revenues were under budget by about $228,000. Expenditures were also under budget by $851,000, which is a favorable result. And then if you look at the line that says excess deficiency of revenues over expenditures, you would plan the year to use $425,000 out of fund balance. Um, you actually used 306000 out of fund balance, so that was a favorable result of $119,000. Um, so in the end, fund balance for the school department was $2,343,000, which is reflected on this chart here. So you can see that's a slight decline from the prior year. Um, the next thing that you might want to look at would be page three, which is going to show you the components of fund balance. So at the bottom of the first column, the general fund, you can see we have two categories. There's 2.1 million of carryover fund balance. So that's the amount that you have <coughs> voted on to use in the June 30, 2018 budget year. Um, assuming that's how 2018 comes out, that would mean you'd have about $241,000 of fund balance available going forward after that. And so this slide just kind of shows you uh, a comparison of some other communities and where they stand. And, and in this slide, I tried to use other communities. Well, these are all ones that we work with, for one. But their budgets are also similar in size to, um, to the Scarborough School Department. Um, so you can see here, I can definitely say among the schools that most of the schools that we work with, when you're looking at unassigned fund balance, a lot of them are running really lean. So you can see that there's quite a few of them that are under 1%. Um, assuming the carryover does get spent. So that's pretty consistent. RSU 21 is Kenny Bunk. That's really kind of very much an outlier. Um, they, they received a whole a lot of money from uh, the main public employee retirement system. It was kind of a windfall. So uh, they're in a, definitely a different situation. Um, I also did look at other local communities like South Portland, Falmouth, and Cape Elizabeth. Um, you know, I, I could only get their total fund balance, and they're really in the 5 five to 6% range, which is where you are for total fund balance. Um, but those communities have, except for South Portland, uh, the budgets are significantly um, less than Scarborough. So Falmouth, Cape Elizabeth budgets are almost half of what Scarborough is. So it might be not, not easy to compare. Um, so just looking at some expenditure trends, uh, regular instruction, about 18 million, special ed, a little over 6 million, debt service is at about, I think, five, five or $6 million. Um, and again, the, the change from 16 to 17 was just a function of the debt service being paid out of the Wentworth Fund. Um, also would like to make mention, that you probably should make mention within the school department financial statements, the, the lunch program. And so if you go to page 16, uh, the type is a little small, but um, you see the school nutrition program is kind of in the middle. And if you look at the line, the middle line, revenues over under expenditures, it will show that the lunch program had a loss for the year of $328,697. Um, and so that's been, you know, I think here in Scarborough, it's been consistently over $200,000 a year for quite a few years. Um, and so we've actually got some information on some other um, local communities that we can kind of share with you as well. Um, so South Portland's. Uh, they their lunch program lost 400,000 this year. Uh, Kenny Bunk they lost about 200,000. Um, Cape Elizabeth lost about 100,000. So um, I can definitely speak to uh, the fact that um, I think there are there are significantly fewer lunch programs that make money. Um, there's probably only a handful. I'd say probably less than 10, um, from what I've been told. So I mean the goal there is really to try to, to break even. But I can definitely say that it's. Um, from, from what I've seen, it's the, the, the more affluent communities seem to have um, uh, 
a, a difficult time with the lunch program making money. Although Falmouth, for some reason, they're able to make money. Falmouth consistently makes five or ten thousand dollars a year and have a significantly lower, uh, smaller school population, and definitely is a, a very affluent community. So maybe it would be worth seeing what it is that they're doing because they seem to have figured it out. Um, so that that. Uh, concludes our presentation. Unless there's any other questions or details um, you'd like me to go over. Um, and as I said, the, the audits go very well. Both uh, you know, finance departments for both the, the town and the school do a great job. Um, really no issues with the audit, no audit adjustments. So that uh, certainly speaks well um, you know, to the job that they do. Questions? Thank you. That was excellent. I think uh, really good. very appreciated. All right. Thank you. I think we are going to Mr. split. Oh, Jay Marie. I move we move into executive session. The town calls into executive session to discuss order number 18012. Second. You have to read it out. Oh, the whole thing? Executive session. Yeah, you have to. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, act on the request of the following executive sessions. A, an executive session pursuant, <coughs> excuse me, to Title 36 of the MRSA Section 382 Sub 2 for the purpose of deliberating a hardship poverty tax abatement case number 201801 and to come back to public session for action and B, Move into an executive no, session. No, 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 just a, just a, just a. Oh, we're coming back out then. Yeah, because we. Because uh, it's all one, audience, it's all uh, it's, it's are, written as one order. We are going to go into executive session for a, a hardship uh, appeal on a tax abatement. Uh, we'll then come out of it. We'll conduct that in the manager's conference room. We will come out of that meeting for the purpose of voting making a decision on that. We'll then go back into executive session in the manager's conference room for the town manager annual report re review. And we'll be adjourning from that point, just so that everyone will know. Do I hear a second to the motion? Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Thank you, that's unanimous. Uh, we're having a <laughs> 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 <laughs>